Hello, I'm Joseph, and this is another video on the Frost 2D game engine. I'm going to go ahead and boot up my little demo here real quick of a um, something I'm trying to dog food. As the game engine is being made, I want to be able to try to make a game in it. A little quick, you know, simple game. Uh, so this is a uh, animated sprite running in idle currently, or the idle animation. Uh, I, I have just a simple little, you know, tiled map editor thing. And one of the layers has a collision custom property that I read in to add in physics or to let the physics engine know what's going on. So I have, you know, I can move it around and it falls off and stuff like that. Um, this is not ideal for a side scroller, by the way. You should not be making character movements with a physics engine. You can just code it up yourself. Um, but the, the point of this is I have a jump as well. The problem with the jump is it doesn't jump very far. So if I go down here, I can't jump back up. Well, let's go ahead and fix that. So if I go ahead and look for this real quick here, here's my jump. It does an impulse, so a quick bump, um, and I'm going to change this to 400. And it does a live reload. So now I can go ahead and jump out. Cool, right? Well, let's say I'm down here and I'm like, crap, now I can't, I can't do it. And as I'm trying to jump, maybe I fall off and it's like, crap. Now I got to restart my whole game again. Well, no, you can hit control R. Resets the world data, but it doesn't reset the engine data. The world in PHP lives separate from the engine. So it knows how to live reload the world. Right now, the engine has no way to actually live reload anything. Um, so PHP is controlling this whole live reload. Um, and the way that this is working is PHP has its own separate process it runs outside of the engine, talking over name piped, or I guess like piped sockets for Windows and um, unit sockets for uh, Mac OS and Linux. So, you know, you know, we, we, now we have a better thing here. Now, I also have an animation. Animation runs and does a half a slash, but not the whole slash. It's not the right tile, so let me go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna go over here. Oh, it's a typo. Should have been two, not one. So again, I save it, and here we are with that. I can go ahead and you know now I have my whole slash animation there. Now let's say you know I, as I'm writing my PHP code, obviously I'm not the perfect person. I'm gonna make a syntax error. I save it, crashes. It's like crap. The engine pauses. So it's like, oh, you know something happened. It didn't give me a clean exit code. Clean exit code is zero for reference. So what I can do now is just go ahead and fix it, save it, and now I'm back up and running again. Um, this is ideal for rapid prototype development. And this is all an event system, so you can save your world at any state that you want. You program it yourself. And if you want to do like a replay system as well, because these are all given per frame events, you have that ability in there. Um, this is the glorification of what Frost means for me and how it's triggered is very dumb for a live reload and uh, reset system. I'll show you that briefly. So the P the Frost engine can run three ways as a DLL embedded in a, in a runtime of a uh, scripting engine like PHP or Python or Lua. Uh, it can run in its own separate process with no association to the game engine, other than knowing that it has to talk to a named pipe or Unix domain socket, um, or it can run as a bundle, which I do not have right now in the final form. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I'm gonna stop talking there and talk about the actual live reload system, because this will need to be implemented in each of the languages you work with, but separately, they're different. Um, so here I have the live reloading feature for IPC support. Um, what this does here is it looks to say, okay, has the world been loaded? If it hasn't, let's go ahead and look for some loaded, uh, some save data. If it's there, then let's go ahead and try to restore it. And by that, it just does a glorification of serialize and unserialize. You can use JSON encode and decode, but by doing unserialize and deserialize, you can then specify with magic functions in PHP what to do when you unserialize the data or when you serialize it. Um, I think there's some, some um, RFC for JSON support as well, but yeah, that gives you some, some idea there if you want to do that. You don't have to use unserialize and serialize. You can use any function you want in PHP. Heck, you can use protocol buffers if you want to. Um, so there's, there's that bit there. And then after that, it looks for a shutdown flag. Now, this is something that runs in dev mode. Um, basically, the engine sees a file has changed and says, okay, the file changed, you should shut down. PHP will, you know, as you're you're writing this logic, you decide how you want to handle that. Well, in this instance, I'm handling it in that if I see it and I read it and it's not a reset, I go ahead and save the world, 
and do a die. Die is a clean exit of zero. If you do an exit of a different number other than zero, the game engine waits for something that else to happen. So this is how I reload and reset. Effectively, I um, remove the shutdown flag and the reset um, is unlinked elsewhere before this even starts back up again. So it doesn't get read from here either. So um, when I do a reset, if I look for uh, R, here, so when I hit Control R, I just unlink that file prematurely, so the previous saved data, um, and then I just don't load it again when I do my reset. And this is PHP also creating that same shutdown flag. So it just follows the same system the game engine does, but it does it to itself um, and then exit out or dies. Now, you know, in I talked about like the exit code. So if I, uh, uh, I'm in an animation, hit the letter Q, stuff was still happening, but you can see the animation is paused. It's because I gave an, an, an explicit exit code of 10. So if I look for 10 here, you can see that on Q, you press the exit code. The idea here is that I still need to implement a way to shut the engine down completely. This way, if you have some GUI and you hit the like, like quit, it'll be able to tell the engine, hey, I just want you to shut everything down, not just my uh, scripted engine. And so it would be equivalent to hitting the letter X. So that's how all that stuff works. Pretty basic and simple, straightforward. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the um, font loading audio and plugin system. So this one here is running as a native PHP extension. Doesn't need to run this way for any of this example, by the way, but I'm just showing you just for context. Press the letter or press enter here and start this up. Um, PHP did not succeed. Turn type no process commands. What in, what did I do? What did I do? Okay, let's reload this. Let's no, because it's trying to load up the save data. So that's probably why. Okay. Yep, that was it. Okay. <clears throat> um so this is PHP. PHP is you know a bit slow in this context. So if I run uh, I don't want to say a bit slow. It's much faster than Python, by the way. I've, I've done this same benchmark. I'm going to get to 12,000. At 12,000 bunnies, I get about 26 frames a second. Quite slow. Well, let me go ahead and uh, close this up, rerun this again. But this time, I'm going to go ahead and run it with Rust. So there is a plugin system. Um, actually, before I run it with, let me do the audio. So I hit the letter P. O. Uh, that's mini audio. So I packaged in mini audio to do audio playback. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and press the letter R to load in my Rust plugin. And I'm going to turn off event stacking. I'll show you what that does in a little bit. Um, but I'm going to turn it off. And now when I hit that same 12,000 mark, not even a blip to the frame rate. In fact, I can go quite much higher. And if I want, I can go all the way up to 64,000. And I'll go to about the same frame rate the PHP uh, script is running at. So you get a lot of performance going from Rust or Zig in this instance, because I do have both supported here. Now, um, with that, you can also do plugin live reloading. So I'm doing a complete cold restart, but I had 64,000 sprites in there. I'm going to hit the letter R. It is running as Rust, but also PHP is now aware of all these plugins or all these sprites via event stacking. Event seconds turned on by default, um, but this means that anything that's shared between the plugin and PHP now talk to each other. They know about each other's events, um, but it is quite slow. So if I hit the letter B, it goes then to the Rust version of that. And if I hit the letter M, it then falls back to um, uh, the plugin didn't unload. So I'm going to try this one more time here so we can see what that means. Um, if I refresh this and delete that save data real quick, try this one more time. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some sprites in PHP. I'm going to run the Rust plugin. Rust will not know about the PHP because it's loaded afterwards. So I'm going to hit R. I'm going to put in some sprites from the Rust version that's talking to the engine. But PHP knows about both of these. It's just PHP is not currently trying to do anything with it. I'm going to go ahead and unload the Rust plugin. It goes back to PHP, and PHP was aware about the existing sprites, and now it starts to animate them all rather than just its initial subset of them. Um, so this is what event stacking is, is intended to do. 
is that you have a way to communicate between plugins in the, the scripting engine as well as the game engine. And each of these have their own world, so they handle serialization and unserialization of, of game state or world state separately, and they can all choose how to implement uh, live reloading, reset world data, uh, when syntax error is happening, and so on and so forth. So that's that. Um, with that, there is a, a lot I still need to do in terms of getting this ready, but I do want to do an alpha release to let you guys kind of mess with it and play around with things. Um, so for example, that, that first one that I had shown you, that a little bit of an example of the uh, this bit, is actually just with tiled. So I made, I made the world in tiled, <coughs> like I said, it has a, 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 like a quick tile processor, or um, not processor, um, parser. To, to go ahead and read that stuff. Um, but there's all this other stuff in here. So if I go ahead and I go into uh, data here, I have adapters. And what I find out very quickly that I didn't want to try to do was manage all these events in C structs and how C structs are implemented in each of these different languages by hand. Um, and so I have ways to generate a C header, a PHP file, Python file, Rust file, Zig files, uh, Swift files, all with these adapters that generate it based off a uh, struct, structs.json that de declares all the stuff and um, yeah, knows about all this stuff here. Um, pretty straightforward and on how all this works. You basically just copy it over into the, into the subsystems or languages and then you can have the new compatible version of the engine available to you without linking anything. You just include a, a, a library effectively at that point. But this will give me the ability to run with anything else. I can in, uh, generate a, a JavaScript version or a Lua version or a Ruby version. Um, it, it's just the extras are the parts that get a little bit harder. So for example, what I mean by extra is the animated sprite, the engine knows nothing about. PHP knows about the animated sprite, knows how to move the texture um, source position over from one tile to the next in the texture you know, sprite set. Um, but the engine doesn't know anything about this. It doesn't need to know about this. And my idea here is that I want to drive um, the engine's capabilities through the language that's there. And if it's a good enough solution, then I can bake it in but not make it mandatory, or I can provide that out into the other languages as options as well. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to work with GUI in this instance uh, with this, because I don't know if I want to just you know implement a custom GUI solution in it like PHP or just throw in um, what was it IMGU or something like that uh, that works with SDL three. Um, yeah, so this is you know the effective way of how like a tiered one supported language of PHP will be, um, where a Python right now will also be tier one, but like JavaScript and Lua might be tier two and, and rust and zig are tier three in that it's just the basic communication protocols needed to talk to the engine itself um if i go into those plugins so I go to engine um you know it's not linking anything about the frost engine same thing with the cargo package it's not linking anything to the cargo um, thing it will just be you'd include the lib for frost that's it um and again it doesn't need to link it would be native zig or Rust code uh, as the library. And the same thing with PHP, you'd be able to use Composer. You're not downloading stub files to get your editor to work. You're literally calling PHP code that has all the information in there uh, for its set. And I try to use this system to abstract it away the complexity of the engine. So for example, uh, for the sprite here, there is you know set position and get position. So when you set the position, it sets up a dirty flag uh, that's tracked and then notify engine if you're trying to receive an event that you need to set the position but you don't want to tell the engine because you're just consuming the event um, obviously you can set it to false but if it is there what happens then is um, there is a pack thing that goes through and triggers or sets up all the events that are to be called so here we have texture load uh, source set rec um, sprite move so on and so forth so all these different flags can be triggered by changing the data in the sprite class it feels like it's all native to php but under the hood it still is doing this work to figure out what it needs to do in order to send the information to the game engine but
but not in a way that makes it an, um, hard to work with in making rapid iterations in PHP with the engine or in Python, Lua, JavaScript, like I said. All these things have the ability to do name pipes for Windows or IPC or um, you know um, Unix web sockets or domain sockets for, for Linux and Mac, and that includes JavaScript. So JavaScript has Bun, Node.js, and um, Dino, and all those have that same support. Um, so if I make one JavaScript language version, and inherently maybe a TypeScript version as well, um, all that can be done in a in your Bun runtime or your Dino runtime or your Node.js runtime. Uh, it's not locked to PHP. It's just I like PHP as it is, um, and I, I, I kind of like its mechanisms that has built in for web development, but also here. This gets into a bunch of other stuff, though. So, for example, if I needed to do a network call, it's completely blocking. It will lock any updates that happen. And so I do want to have some extra events set aside for network calls or um, the potential of just using a plugin to do this rather than putting it into the engine itself. But I need to um, think more about the event system and how I want to introduce custom events and allow people to extend the game engine with their own events without having to modify the core source code, which if you don't know at this point is in Swift. This game engine is built in Swift. Um, it's designed that way not to be fast, but to be modifiable. Swift is not that hard of a language to learn. And um, you can pick it up pretty quickly, and it's not something like C because it has a lot of safeguards in it, including um, you know uh, multi-process or threading or any type of concurrency or parallel in there. It has um, strict checking on that by default. So you know that's the Frost engine and in its current capacity. I'm hoping once I get some of the more um, you know major bugs kind of fixed and ratified, and maybe just fix up the slicer scroller. So I could do like camera movement and stuff like that uh, and get to the door and be able to hit up and know that I'm at the door and, you know, you finished the level, that type of thing. Um, that's where I'm headed for. Um, and I'm hoping that'll be done within the next week.